sessions. The first one is that we would like to in, uh, give you a short information about our say pub offers, which we have, which means that our COSSs, we will introduce the pub offers to you as good as possible. You can raise your question whenever you like, even in the chat, or just raise your hand or interrupt me. No problem for that. And on the second part, we would then show you how we work in PCS. And we will have even a colleague, I hope, on board from Infrabel later on, John, who will give us further information, I guess, about the parameters on InfrabelNet. That's right, uh, Freddy is there. Perfect, Freddy, very good to have you. And, and about some specialities in PCS. So I think it might could get interesting to you. I hope it is. So let's start with our presentations. And for this, I will start with Corey Donorsi Baltic. And I would share my screen. I hope you can see the screen. Yes, partly. No, yeah. Mm -hmm. Perfect, great. So I will switch off my camera now because yesterday I heard from a customer that uh, so my my like picture didn't work at the beginning. So I will take it off right now to keep the line clean. But please just interrupt me if you have questions. All right. So here we are with our pub capacity offer offer from Corridor Norsi Baltic. And if you see Norsi Baltic, Norsi Baltic is, say, our uh, corridor where the western part meets the eastern part and where we have like pub offers which go beyond the corridor because the pub offers meet like Scandinavia. So Corridor 3 and Corridor 8 have pubs which are jointly produced together. The same goes with Corridor 7. Orient East Met, which goes down here in Eastern Europe to Southeast Europe. And uh, we have then joined pub offers. With this, I would like to tell you, even though we have eight IMs in this corridor, we are all a big family working together. And as you, as a customer, have transports as well, which not always only go in one corridor, we will always offer you a joint timetable as far as you request it. Here, I would just shortly like to give you a view on our process line for the annual timetable. Right now, in January, last month, we had our pub publication on the 10th of January. And then, since then, you had the time to check the pub catalogs, which we sent out to all customers in Europe. And um, but because we think that it's not always so easy to deal with a pub catalog itself or to deal with PCS, even if you're a newcomer, we offer with r and &E these joint trainings during this time, like February and March, where we would like to give you as much support as possible so that you know what do we offer, how can you request it, and how can you use the system, pass coordination system, which is a very good tool, international tool, but which is complex as well. So here we are at these PCS trainings right now. In this time, you will also have until the April, which is a deadline. The 11th of April is the deadlines for the pass request. But within this time, there will even be the FTE conference forum train Europe where you as a customer meet the IMs, for example, and if you want to us as a COSS as well, and where you get consulted, where you can ask about timetables and anything like that. And during this FTE, if you would like us to be there, just give us a short note and we will join your meetings, your FTE Anträge, if you will place them. However, during this time, until the pass requesting uh, order 
is placed on the 11th of eight. Do never hesitate. We as the COSSs are there for you to, to support you in anything. And it's very important for me just as a last sentence to say, if you as a customer could already get your dossiers ready until the Friday, the 8th of um, April, because then you will still have at least one day in case something doesn't work, you can't set your green light and place a request uh, in PCS because there still is a parameter needed or whatever. So it's always good once you uh, create your dossier to please try to have it ready until the Friday before the deadline is on Monday. And then we all will have a relaxed time on that. So now come to the pub capacity offer of our North Sea Baltic corridor. Here, I would like to give you a short introduction about our new lines or routes that we have. We have extended the corridor this year again. Last year, it was extended because we had Latvia in the corridor, the Baltic states, routes to Latvia and Estonia up to Tallinn. So pub offers are being here or are uh, presented to you since last year. But this year we have a new route inserted to the ports of Ghent and Seebrugge. And you will find it in the pub catalog as well, which I can show to you in a minute. And we have a new route to Medica. So if anybody of you is interested in that, please never hesitate, just contact me. Then uh, it's interested or interesting to know as well that the pub offer on Corridor North Sea Baltic has three pub state types which we offer. One type is a long distance pub and long distance pub means these are pubs which are either combined with other corridors for long stretches, long traffic concepts. And secondly, these are pubs which go or refer to wishes which came back from the wish list. So you as a customer has a possibility in May to send out wishes to us or you would like a pub to, to be constructed. And we receive them by the end of August or the mid, mid of August or beginning of August, round about that. And when we receive these wishes, we try to have a look on them and try to see if something is possible, what we could construct, which would come more to your need. This year, we have like 38 long distance pubs, which have been constructed and which are more or less uh, in total after wishes or partially. It always depends on what was possible to be constructed. If you find these wishes, you can, and you think, oh, these routes are interesting for me, but I don't want to have the complete route. I just want to request a short term of it. It's possible as well, because you can separate them as they are separated anyhow in sections. If we look at these long distance pubs, we have this year for, say, the first time jointly with Corridor OEM, Orient East Met, Joseph, who is here with us as well, diversional routes and optional diversional routes for certain, um, say, lines in Czech Republic. And here, I would like to ask Lukas, our expert from IM side, from Strava Selesnik, to give us a short information about how these TCRs on like Checknet will look like, which haven't which haven't interfere with our pubs. So maybe Lukas, I hope you can hear me, and you are there. <laughs> yes, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon to everyone. My name is Lukáš Čechan and I represent Správa Železnic. 
who is the I infrastructure manager in Czech Republic. And I would like to shortly inform you about a little bit specific pub offer on our network. In actual timetable, uh, we are dealing with total closure on the line between Česká, Třebová and Brno. Uh, you can see it approximately in the middle of the map on the screen. And as a consequence, we have offered diversion routes via Havlíčkov Brod and via Přerov for timetable 2022. By the end of this timetable, we are hopefully going to finish this TCR. So with start of timetable 2023, we can offer some pubs on direct flat road uh, to Brno again. But anyway, there is still critical TCR near Pardubice. So we decided to offer diversion routes until the end of June 2023 again. Well, for traffic uh, via Česká Třebová, so traffic that need need to go to Česká Třebová, we offer the direct route through the whole timetable time, time year. And additionally, we offer the diversion route via Přerov like we did in timetable 2022. These additional pub sections via Přerov are offered until the end of June only. And for the remaining traffics, which don't need to go via Česká Třebová, the pub offer is published via diversion route via Havlíčkov Brod until the end of June. And from July, when this critical TCR near Pardubice is finished, the offer is prepared via flat route via Česká Třebová again. I hope that it was clear and understandable uh, of course, if you have any questions, you can ask me and it's all from my side and I would like to give the floor uh, back to Felicia. Thank you very much. Felicia, you're it's, muted. Yeah, I wanted to say as well. Otherwise, if we lost Felicia, we could continue with Paul. Can yes. you hear me? Oh, no. again? Yeah. Oh, yes. perfect. So um, from house and nine went off. <laughs> it must be the storm today. However, so thank you, Lukas, for your information. And if anybody has questions on that, but don't hesitate. I'm happy to have Lukas around. Um, so another issue of our say of our long distance pubs are increased parameters because some of our customers, they reply to us that the parameters we offer are not very high. And therefore we tried this year very urgently to increase these uh, parameters as well. And especially between Germany and Czech Republic also, so maybe this comes up to your needs as well. Then go ahead with say 44, 44 short distance pubs. That would be the second unit of the pub offer. First the long distance, which comes after the wishes and the short distance pubs more, go more or less uh, combination with feeders and outflows. And they are not after wishes, but can come close in certain say areas to wishes. However, their border crossing, you can see it on the map here. And I hope that they might find your interest because our IMs <laughs> had a lot of effort in creating these pubs and we are really trying to, to get as good as possible to serve your needs. Okay, then last but not least, um, the DigiCat, I call it DigiCat, it's the, our pub catalog. We always try to get better on that in every corridor. And I hope that this DigiCat will also help you in finding these PCS pub uh, IDs. And to just give you brief information how it looks like, you have been receiving it maybe already, but how to deal with it is another case. And maybe just give you a short introduction by showing this schematic map again. These are the routings. 
And we have these three types of say pubs, long, short, I explained already. Separate pub sections are sections which are showing certain say relations like between Rotterdam and Beethoven Meteren, Amsterdam Eusenzaal, Amersfoort, Amsterdam. These are separate pub sections which we offer, offer additionally. But coming back to the long distance pubs, you click on long distance pubs, then you can see the routes here, either in this graph, try to, to uh, draw it down, but also you can see the description origin destination in here. And the first two are always like relations which go from Western to Eastern part, but Czech Republic and further South connection with my colleague Joseph from Corridor Orient East Met. And then we have like pubs which go to Poland from uh, Western to to the eastern part and vice versa. And the third unit would be like the destinations catching up on Paul's Corridor 3, Stan Met. And we hope that we have a good solution for you that we can offer this year. And last but not least, there is another route which comes from Rotterdam to Oberhausen. And these, as I tried to say, are the routes which we try to catch up as close as possible to the wishes which came back to us. The short distance pubs I showed them before are like international harmonized routes. And if you go directly always on that link, you will be guided to the timetable where you can either see when you can leave from, in this case, Malachevice, when you will be in Widerritz. The same would go, for example, say Malmö, when you have a train going from, say, Belgium to Scandinavia. Go on this pub, you check the times, check the parameters, and hopefully some will fit to your needs. So this is actually what I wanted to show you in a short, say, introduction round. And if you do have no questions right now, I would hand over to my colleague. If you do have questions, feel free to, to just say them now. And we would wait three seconds. And if there is nothing in the chat, I don't see anything right now. No. Then I would hand over to my colleague. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Felicia. And this is Paul again for Corridor 3 ScanMet. Um, I've brought to you uh, four slides for today's meeting. The first slide, our schematic map with the pub offer. After that, some improvements and changes. And the third point is a TCR overview for ScanMet North, which is new and contact persons in, ca in case of questions. Next slide, please. Um, it could be that my internet has also a slight delay today because we are out of electricity in my hometown. So my laptop tells me it will shut down in 55 minutes and after that I will connect via smartphone. Until that, um, you will see here our pub offer for timetable 2023. Um, you might notice on the right side of the screen a slight decrease of the number of offered kilometers, pub kilometers, a decrease from 13.7 to 10 million path pub kilometers. Where does this decrease come from? Uh, this is mostly coming from an increased number of TCRs via Denmark and in the north of Germany. So the bar in dark green, oh, this is representing ScanMet North. That is everything uh, north from Maschen. So everything between 
Norway and Martian. In this part, we cut it out several days that I will show you later on. All in all, to sum up, the number of pups remains stable. It's just that we offer less days with prearranged paths. Also on our corridor map, you might notice that we have indicated the connections to Corridors 8 in Maschen Osnabrück, the connection to Corridor 3, Bologna Piacenza, and the possible connection to RFC 5 also via Bologna. We're coming to the next slide. Um, yeah, what has changed uh, for timetable 2023? A new pub numeration. You might have seen Felicia's pub IDs. They start with a C, standing for Corridor, followed by some numbers or one number for Corridor 3. This would be number 3, C3, Corridor 3, and followed by NP for Normal Path Request, which is the new name for PUB. So C3, NP, and then some more digits indicating the number of the PUB. Yeah, the number of harmonized PUBs connections uh, with Corridor one and eight remains also stable. Um, our pub catalog has slightly increased with some, I would say, more easier way to handle it. And we're coming now to the TCR information on ScanMed North. On the next slide. <laughs> and yeah, this is a complete new overview and why have we made such an overview? In the timetable period 2022, we noticed, oh, there is a total closure in the summer period in Denmark. And our customers in that period received timetables for the Swedish and German part, but no timetable for Denmark. We want to avoid that situation and instead inform you beforehand for which periods can you expect an offer in Denmark and for which periods can can't you expect an offer in Denmark? Those periods are indicated in gray color. So the first weekend with a total closure is the 18th of March until 19th of March. Um, you may notice two more colors, namely a yellow color indicating that we offer in these periods tailor-made timetables together with feeders and outflows, but we do not offer in the yellow uh, periods pubs. This is also due to TCRs and uh, these TCR affect the border times. Those we cannot offer reliable pubs as one of the main features of pubs are fixed border times on Corridor 3. And uh, the positive news at the end uh, in the periods that are in our corridor blue, there you have a complete pub offer. And yeah, in these periods, uh, you can apply for pubs as you are used from the previous timetable periods. The table below uh, is also for requests via Kornschu, but there is only very, very small information about uh, periods with a total closure. What should you do if this overview tells you nothing or you say, I don't know what is meant here. If that's the case, I kindly invite you for a customer telco or for questions uh, that we can clarify bilaterally. Last but not least, who is this? Who is that? Who should you contact then? Uh, in the first manner regarding questions for pubs, please come to me, Paul, and you see my contact data there. If you have questions regarding new trains, new traffics, or uh, or an end customer, please go to Costa, Cesmetsis, and yeah, our managing director, Emanuele, is also always happy to help. This was a very short, brief um, yeah, presentation about COVID-03, and I will also wait three, four, five seconds for eventual questions. Otherwise, I will hand over to John. Thank you very much. I guess the five seconds are over. Yes. Thank you very much, Paul. <laughs> <laughs>
So now a few words about Corridor North Sea Mediterranean. We will uh, start with a few figures and then we will have a look at our catalog. Uh, next slide, please. So this year, 2023, we have an increase of the publication volume, 27 million kilometers. It has to do with the new rules for capacity needs announcements at SNCF Réseau. Um, our customers have been able to ask more capacities and that we have been able to uh, harmonize with the neighboring IMs. And also, uh, we had this year no delay from SNCF Réseau uh, for the construction and harmonization. It means we have been able to publish almost everything that our customer have asked. That was not the case for 2022. Next slide, please. And here, um, an overview of the volumes of PAPs we are offering. Um, of course, the majority of them only RFC2, 257. We have uh, excellent connections with the Corridor North Sea Baltic, uh, through Essen, Rosendal, Direction, Germany, and even Sweden. Also, excellent cooperation with uh, Corridor Rhine Alpine and SBB Infra that have made uh, possible to connect 20 of our capacities to Switzerland and even further to Italy through Chiasso or Domodossola. Also good via border points more than and then continuing direction uh, Torino or other cities. Um, 49 um, capacities to the Mediterranean side of Spain or the south of France. Many of them are coming from Mannheim, Saarbrücken or other German city through Forbach. And then so, some capacities together with Corridor Atlantic to the west side of Spain or to, to Bayonne. And now I will have uh, I will leave this presentation and we will have a look at the RFC catalog. This is here an overview of our catalog. Actually, North Sea Corridor North Sea Mediterranean has a lot to do with Antwerp seaports and the connection to the south uh, with Switzerland, Italy. Uh, through Basel, but we have also a lot of connection to the north of France, uh, to Luxembourg, to the east of France, and something specific, we will have a look at it right now. Between Antwerp and Rotterdam, we have some rolling planning capacities. What does it mean? We make part of the TTR pilots Rotterdam Antwerp, and we are trying to publish and we are publishing new kind of passive uh, of capacities that are available for freight RUs on very short term basis. The one you can see here, they are marked in blue. They will be uh, avail available at month minus four. It means uh, for January, it will be somewhere around October, November of this year. You will be able to order the capacities for January 2023. Of course, we are already publishing some capacities for 2022. They are not mentioned here, but you may ask me uh, the catalog and I will be happy to help you. So this is here the generic uh, Catalog ProRail InfraBell between Rotterdam and Antwerp. You can see also the in yellow the capacities of uh, Corridor North Sea Baltic. We will have another look uh, here. Many capacities to France, and here uh, I will click here on BA, and you will see all the capacities uh, in the east of France, and many of them heading to Basel. 
Uh, here you have the arrival time in Basel. Um, what you can also find in our catalog, uh, here is another uh, general map, and you have also here a list of uh, origin destination. You can just click on it and you will arrive to respective page. Finally, you've got another explanation about the path IDs we have uh, for corridor uh, 6, 4 and 2, a new abbrevi abbreviation that we have developed together. Uh, there is an explanation here above and here under you will be able to see the meaning of all the abbreviations that are included in these path IDs. So, uh, I know by experience, uh, opening all these PCS dossiers is not always an easy task. Um, as such, it's not uh, now in a few minutes that I will explain you what to do and how to do, but if you have any difficulties, if you have difficulties to find the capacity, to find a technical detail, a local type or whatever, uh, of course, the RNE support is there, but uh, in some cases, I can very easily help you. So please do not hesitate to call me or to write me. That's it for my part. Thank you very much for your attention. And if there are any questions, please let me know. Thank you so much, Jean. So we would have Steffi, I think, now on yes, board. I just wanted to ask, uh, uh, wait the five seconds. <laughs> and I think the so. five seconds are over. They are uh, over now, yeah. The floor <laughs> is yours, Stephanie. Thanks a lot. So, um, also thanks a lot for the introduction, um, the corridor, <clears throat> sorry, the corridor specific introduction to your corridors, um, and as well uh, for all the important, um, yeah, questions you already uh, answered, such as the new pub numbering um, and also the deadlines which have to be followed should be followed if you want to be successful at the end with your um, order. And um, so I would directly jump um, into RFC Run Alpine. We have the uh, pub capacity offer for the timetable 2023, some improvements and changes, um, and then a short uh, outlook on the timetable year 2024. Yeah. So um, if we have a look on the yeah, schematic map um, with the numbers, um, with the capacity offer, uh, you might recognize that in total, um, if you compare to last year or to last years, um, it did not change. But if we have a closer look um, at each uh, country, then in Belgium and in um, Switzerland, it changed. Um, reasons I will um, explain shortly, but the numbers you see here are always for both directions combined. And uh, in the southern and also in the northern part of the corridor, we have some short pubs, which we offer. They are in the, the mint. <laughs> um, green um, color and the, the blue color um, um, are the numbers for both directions each day for the long pub offer. So if you want to run, for example, from Amsterdam to Galarate, um, then you need to choose a, a long pub and um, run nearly through all over the cor corridor. And if you only want to, for example, um, run from Maasvlakte to Oberhausen Steckrade, or maybe until uh, somewhere else in northern um, Germany, you can uh, request a short pub if this matches with uh, the, the running time um, and the departure and arrival, which you need. And you choose the short pub for example, until Oberhausen Steckrade, and then also choose an outflow um, for the, the last mile, so to say, which could be even more than one mile, which we know. 
So coming back to the changes in Belgium and in Swiss, in Switzerland, I would directly jump to the next slide. Um, we have a division between the short and long pubs in Belgium, but in total the number stayed the same. And one important other thing is uh, that the pubs in Belgium are constructed with um, 650 meters, but you always can request in each other um, case as well but Belgium um, is important. In this case, um, you can request on longer, um, uh, longer trains and um, yeah, depending if it's possible to construct, um, also if it's the right time in the day um, that it's possible, uh, you will receive an offer for um, a longer train. Then, um, yeah, the next point, um, which I also mentioned before, um, are the numbers which um, are offered um, within the pubs um, in Italy, uh, in Switzerland, sorry. So this changed in total <coughs> uh, only between the different borders. So this is due to TCRs and um, also taking into account the, um, yeah, the wish list um, which we received from some of you SDRUs and applicants. And so now we offer um, from Basel uh, to Domodossola via Lechberg uh, 12, yeah, 12 um, pubs per day um, and um, for both directions and um, via, um, yeah, between Basel and Chiasso and Basel and Luino, uh, 24 pubs for each day and both directions for both lines and also each. So this the change. Um, what my colleagues um, Sean and Paul already mentioned are the in the one case uh, with RC2 the harmonized pubs. So you can directly jump from a pub from RC2 to a pub on RC1 or the other way around. And um, with Paul with RFC3 we have harmonized paths. So if you come from the northern part, you can um, run on a pub uh, until Piacenza. Then um, just have a norm. Uh, uh, a normal path um, until Bologna and from there you can uh, go on on a pub and the other way around as always. So what did also change? Um, <clears throat> sorry for my voice, I'm a little bit ill but everything's fine. Um, so um, what we also have um, changed is um, also due to TCRs in the previous years, it's possible to run a higher profile between Luino and Galarate, which is um, PC7400. So you need this for the combined traffic and um, a lot of our um, applicants on the corridor do request this and also have their traffics like this. So um, you have the possibility to um, write down in the comments that you need this um, container profile. And um, unfortunately, we did not uh, make it until um, the publication of the pubs um, to also publica uh, uh, publish them accordingly. Um, but for timetable year 2024, they will be published with this profile. But um, Italy, in this case, uh, promised that um, they will um, uh, offer the pubs um, accordingly um, if you request a higher profile. So this is secured. And um, another point which we did change is um, ad an additional intermediate point in Schwetzingen that's, uh, yeah, close to Karlsruhe and uh, Mannheim. And um, yeah, we did analyze uh, the, yeah, your requests uh, for timetable year 2022. And in this case, we um, saw that you do not only request pubs um, as also feeder and outflow. And in this case, we had a request of 110% feeder outflow compared to the pubs. So we analyzed um, if we maybe could um, yeah, change uh, this a number of feeder and outflow a little bit to a higher number of pubs as they are also pre-constructed and in this case um, also for the timetable colleagues um, less work um, to construct tailor-made paths then and also 
yeah, better off for, for, for you as the customers. So we um, took this into account and therefore um, constructed the um, additional intermediate point, as I said, in Schwetzingen. And this is mainly um, good if you want to go to Ludwigshafen. So um, this would be the change, the main change. And um, as always, if you have questions, uh, need further information, do have questions uh, um, to the pub catalog, always feel free to ask me and um, also our managing director, Mark Adler. And uh, nevertheless, um, I wanted to give you a short um, information on timetable year 2024. As so you did not see a lot of um, TCRs for timetable year 2023, but for timetable year 2024, we have a big closure. Um, yeah, nearly at the same location as the Rastatt incidents was. And there is um, a big uh, working group implemented where um, a lot of the IUs and applicants already participate um, that we have, um, yeah, a uh, common look on the rerouting options. And um, so if you maybe did not hear already of this working group, then also just feel free to ask me and I will um, yeah, make the contact to this. So do you have questions? Otherwise, as you know, we wait five seconds now and I will hand over to Felicia again. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yes. so thanks for your attention. <laughs> Thank you very much. So it seems like as if you would not have questions now to right now to the corridors. So maybe let's go to the second part. Second part would be that we would like to go into the system itself, PCS, and then just show you how to create a dossier in a simple way or some basis. As I saw that we have 30% newcomers on board, I, I will show really basics at the start to make everybody a bit more you know, safe in working with PCS. Also, we had these r and uh, beginner trainings, but maybe it's good to always see things twice. And the advanced persons might be a bit bored. I hope it will be not too bad because we will have Freddie then as well. And Freddie will give us some information about, say, speciality functions, which are new in PCS, at least two or three, I think, as I saw. And this will be something very interesting for the advanced persons as well. So then maybe let me briefly try to go to the system now. First of all, um, and before I do that, I would like to save in the end the accounts so that you could um, the accounts and the links to the PCS system. So if you would like to, especially for the newcomers, you could go into PCS try it by yourself while I'm trying to show it to you. And therefore you could uh, use the link PCS, which is now in the chat, PCS test system, would go there. Underneath it, you will find PCS test accounts. This is quite important because if you go in PCS test, we do have from RNE accounts to log in. And each company is mentioned here with a, say, a general account name and the password to get actually into the system is then this very special um, password PC5TE5T. So whoever would like to can try to go for that. And in this chat, you can also see PCS documentation. This means if you cannot follow what I try to show, or if it's too slow or too fast, whatever, then um, RNE has built up a very professional documentation page on the website where you can even see little films of how to create special sessions. 
So if you are interested in, please go on that link later on and you will find definitely some sort of information which will help you. I opened now the PCS test system. It's test one. And what I do first is I take a username. I just uh, took now CDC, but I could have taken any other name as well. Because in this test system, everybody can work as every stakeholder or every party. I can play to be a customer. A customer can play to be a COSS or an IM. And an IM can play to be both. So everything is possible. I log in and see what happens. The password is wrong. So I try it again. Doesn't take it. Let's check the username. Or I take now another one. Okay, yeah. I take Rade to see if it works. It doesn't work. No. Let's go back again. Hold on. Maybe some of you can try it already, whether you can get in or not. This one. Okay, it works. So we are now in it as a customer. And what is the first thing what you can do? First of all, we said that we have sent out these pub catalogs to you. In this case, Digicat, however you call it. Each uh, COSS has created its own pub catalog. And here I would like to go with this kind of pub ID, which has a relation, which leads from I Bernadette Strat to Heizberg, for example. And we try, you, you think, oh yes, this could fit to my needs. And what would we do then? We would like to create a dossier. So we check the number and the number would be C38 and P300. So we go back to the system, which is hopefully stable. And what I do then is I go on this button because here is a button where you can search for pubs and actually create the dossier. You can also go over this button. But from my perspective, if you know already the pub ID, it's much easier to choose this way. So what you do then is you click on pre-arranged path, to go on the direction. Here we say, please always use all directions because corridors go from, from east to west to north and south. So it's better to not miss out on a pub. And then I would now in this case, which we have, I would now choose the corridors involved, for example. And if you do this, you would see, or you can choose Rhine Alpine, any, corridor. You will then see all of the pubs which have been constructed and which are there for you to be requested in PCS. What I don't like right now is that I can only see five like lines. So I will do my settings. I will change my settings here. And I will say I want to see more than five rows. I would like to see like 100 which is the main you can do. Then I go back, I go back to pub search. Everything what I have inserted in here is already placed. I go again on search and what will happen will be that all pubs are now placed again as before, but you will see 100 rows on one side, which makes it sometimes a bit more easier. If you would like to have, for example, a train uh, which runs from contains which which would go for example from Taulov 
I just do an example now. Doesn't matter. And I would apply this location. Then you could even play in PCS like it that you put down your origin. It will be searched. Times could be on the right hand side. You could go for these times, could check them first of all, could have your ID on this side and could add, can, could add the um, or select the pub IDs to create the dossier. But what we will do now, we will not go for town off right now, but we would like to create a complete dossier from Ivella Datastrat, for example, and we said it had the number pub ID 3P, 3PNP, and then 300. If I did not forget, okay, we go on search and then we have like uh, four, four rows. So we have the one from Ibernadetiska to Essen. We have the one from Rosendahl, from the border between Netherlands and Belgium. Sorry. Okay, from the border of Belgium and Netherlands to Germany to Oldenzaal, and then we would take the one from Bad Bentheim Grenze to Marsen, select them, add them to a new dossier. And here at the first step, you would have this creation of new dossier, which is a process, the process line. And you have to follow it. And once everything is, has been finalized, all information has been placed, you will have created a new dossier with basic data. So first of all, we check is the geographical order correct? I Benadetistra to Essen, yes. Then we go from Rosendahl, okay. Times seems to fit. And we go from Oldenzaal to Bad Bentheim, all right. You can see different colors here. The one above is gray and this one is blue. And that means that the gray ones are the fixed pubs, where you cannot change the times. The blue ones are flexible pubs, where you are flexible, a bit more flexible, and where you can adjust times or parameters. So the order is correct. We continue. We come to the applicant path, where you have now the possibility to really change times. But remember, it's not possible for the fix pub. No times can be changed. All right. Flexible pub. Yes, we could change it here. So we could change the this and we say it's 30, for example. Comes earlier. OK, we continue. And now we come to this dossier parameters. These are parameters which are needed to, or given by the IMs and which you need to fulfill. And always when you see these uh, stars, the yellow stars, then it means this is something which needs an information. This field needs to be supplied. Here, in this case, it's a customer number, but it doesn't matter. We continue. And we come to train parameters. And here you have as well the stars, which tell you, please fulfill these parameters. So I will just give it a try now. Fulfill it. OK, we will go down with the weight. To show you how to deal with it, we will take 620 meter wagons here and to have the correct value on the left hand side, which is indicating the train weight. Wagon plus loco train length, wagon plus local, then um, we have to place or shift reset pre-calculation. With this, the train including local, the weight has been calculated automatically because all the IMs have placed the complete weight and length as parameters in PCS so that this is a thing which is being calculated automatically. I can tell you a couple of years it was not automatically and you had to do, uh, you had to always go for it. So we save it for now. And now we try, we go and continue. 
and we uh, try to set the days. But sorry, I forgot something. I'll go back to train parameters because I forgot to show you that we can copy these parameters to each location, which makes it uh, later on a bit easier for your colleagues, your, for your partners, which are working with you on maybe the other side of the border, because you already inserted the main issues. So you say, yes, please, I want to copy the length and the train weight, and I want to copy that to all locations, and I try to continue and then see if it works. OK, it worked. So here you can be sure it has been copied, train weight, and um, even the local uh, type has been um, has been now copied to all of these locations. So what is left to be done? You will choose now the day when you want to run your traffic. I choose Friday. Try to choose Friday. OK, it says yes. It makes it blue and says, aha, uh -huh. the pub is available on that day. Now we say we want to run on Tuesdays as well. And what happens here? Yes, yeah, the timetable says, yes, I even have this pub for the Tuesday. But if you say the train should also run on, on uh, day seven on Sunday, because my end customer would like to have it on that day, then in the end, you will switch to day seven. And if you have a yellow marked timetable calendar, it means that the pub is not available on day seven. However, you can continue and you can continue by trying to, I have to check the availability again. Okay, can continue to request this path. So I continued and what happens now is that you do have two pass variants already in here. The first pass variant goes from um, Alberna Dettenstraat to Maschen and has a fixed pubs, the 300 fixed pubs to Essen. It continues on the pub Rosendal, followed by the pub Bad Bentheim Maschen. For the days, important, five pub days. For day two, you have a different kind of pass combination because the pub is available on the Belgium stretch. It's not available on the, say, Netherlands stretch, but it will be available again on Maschen. So you could ask for it by asking the COSS and CIMs, can we put, can you produce a tailor-made variant for this same day and for the route where we do not have a pub? It's called combined pub. Then you come to the last bit, the basic data. Here we usually ask customers, but customers can decide by themselves, of course, whether they could add in here the train number. And the route. Why do we do it? Because if you see the dossier name, you are you see directly the uh, train number and you can see directly which route it's on about. But this is obviously something what you do not have to do. It's not a must have. But here you can see it then straight away, and that makes it easier for, for your say partner to recognize. If you go in here and you click on all, you would then find it as well. Good, we are going back to here. And now the interesting thing is, um, we would like to add the other pub because we would like to go to Malmö. And here we only have a pub now, which goes from e Bernadettestraat over Rosendal, over Netherland to Germany. And then it's ending in Maschen. 
but maybe we would like to combine it and it should go upwards uh, to Sweden. So what can we do then? We can have the possibility, you have thousand ways in PCS, but you have this way as well to add a pub by clicking on that button. And then you choose the pub ID, which was given for this stretch. The pub ID for that stretch, oh, Paul, I have to check now. I think it's NP14. Okay, see if we will find it. Here's NP14, and here it's starting from Pubborg, but we need it from Russian. So here it is. If we go in here, we will find it, the continuation from Martian to Pubborg. We will go to Pubborg to Taulov, leave it to Taulov now to make it a bit more easier. And we will try to add it to the dossier. Here we have the time again to reorder it. The Bernadettenstraat to Essen. And suddenly we see Martian already, as you can see here. So something went wrong. The ge geographical order is not correct. So what can we do? I, I did it, uh, say it like that. I placed it to the wrong subpass. So I cancel it and I'll just go back. What did I do wrong? I had the button pressed on this subpass one for territory of Infrabel. And because I added the pub by pressing this button, the pub went below this route, this geographical order. But obviously, the continuation should follow from Martian onwards. So I try it again, click on this German territory, click on add pub. Then this is still in here. I'm happy for that. A couple of years was not in there, but that's a good invention. We search again for Martian, here it is. We go to Pubborg, we go to Taulov, and then we could go from Taulov to Pebernholm, but leave it maybe small because it's big already, our say, uh, dossier. So I keep it like it is. And what can you see here now? That the geographical order is a correct one because you come from Remember, the territory Germany was from Bad Bentheim to Maschen. Then we added C3 and P14 to here, catching up Maschen to Pubborg and Pubborg to Tauber. So we continue. And let's see what will happen here. We will come again to a process where it says, I want to insert the pub. Please tell me what I need to do. So I continue, I say, yes, this is OK. You can edit to here. You can continue with a parameter. And you continue with the days, because they are already in here, the ones which we requested beforehand. So I just check the availability. I show a preview and say, please let me check whether this, uh, how it will look like. And now it says, oh, the number, local number is invalid for DBNets. So this is a parameter which we would need to change then on the DBNets because the local type number which is inserted there is not the correct one. However, we, what you can see right here is now these three territories by Bernadettenstraat to Essen, Rosendahl and Taulov. So he says the uh, correct the train parameter is not correct. So what we will do, we will go back on the German stretch. And the stretch is this one. And here I would need to find out what number would be the incorrect one. And I will delete this one. I can see it right now. Not. Let's save it. Show preview. OK. Timetable. Save again. 
And he says again, the local type number is invalid for IMDB nets, but we didn't have this local type number in here because we checked it. So go back again and check what is under the German part above here. Okay. I will just add another one as far as it possible. See if it works. Remember, this is a test system. I will copy that one to all German locations. I just want that. OK. To see whether this was the issue. Here he says, would you like to replace it? Would you like to replace this local type? I say yes. Would like to try to go for it. Save it. Continue and let's see what he will say now. Check availability is always important. So preview. And say, and he still says, even that we have changed the local type now, he's still moaning and says, ooh, the local type is wrong. So uh, here I have to admit right now, I would need to check what really is the case. Why is it wrong? Right now, I could not really see the point. As if you go in the locations from the German territory, we do have a local type in here which is fitable or which is usable. So what we do now is we skip it and we stick to the plan that we will leave this dossier running first of all from Ivena Detestrat to Bad Bentheim Maschen and we will leave it like it. And with this, we have at least for now created the dossier. Remember, it's a testing system, so I would need to check up why this local type was not the right one on the German net. We will not do it now because it, it's too time consuming. But the main issue was today to show you right now how you can create a dossier as we have some newcomers on board. Do you have any sort of questions right now in this group? Would you like to to learn anything else about PCS because we do not have time for, for a lot of cases. But is there anything which pops up your mind which you would like to know right now? OK, here is a hand. I'm happy about that. Freddy. Yeah, it's uh, my clumsy left or right hand <laughs> um, about these local types. I remember I had it uh, some days ago too. Maybe it is due to the way the local type is uh, uh, typed because you should check the discrepancy between the IM parameters local types and look how the local types are defined at DB nets. It yeah. could have to do with the way the you type the local type number. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you so much because this is very important. Um, I had the same issue, I think, yeah. yesterday with a training of uh, a new applicant too. Okay, and this is, but it's really good that you mentioned it, um, Freddy, because this will be the case. And maybe to give the information to the audience, you have in, if something like this happens to you, you always have the possibility in PCS under administration to check up local types, for example, or IM parameters. You go to reference data and here you can find for each, say, agency, if it's now we would go for DBNets because this was the case. And you would then see all local types which are implemented in PCS. Just for your information, so that you know what can be implemented and what a local type 
is not possible to implement because it even can't run on the German net, doesn't have the security certificate, for example. So uh, here you have all these possibilities. Freddy, would you like to add anything else to that topic? Because you're just in the line. Uh, no, not really, but for me it was the way to find out what, what was wrong with inserting the local type. And it was due to the fact that I didn't insert the, the right uh, number of, of the local type, because mm -hmm. there you see the series numbers for DB nets, they are all four digits. If mm -hmm. you start to, to type six digits, then definitely it, it won't work. Yeah, yeah, here you mean. The serious yes. numbers. OK, yeah. So this is a very good hint to everybody. If this happens to you, please just check if the local type which you enter in it or which you would like to enter is the, has the correct number. Because only those are bad. Only those serious types which are mentioned in PCS Live are the correct ones which you can enter to the locations. And while we are at this administration, just shortly for those which have not um, they been involved in all these matters right now, we have also things like IM parameter. What kind of IM parameter are necessary? I will press now Infrabel. There it is. So in, for example, Infrabel, has got that set of IM parameter, which are not mandatory, Freddy, as I can see. Uh, no, they are mandatory, at least for freight. OK, good. This is a testing system, so in life it might be uh, different noted, maybe. I don't know. Because in production, for sure. Mm, yeah, but you can what is the main issue here is you can find the IM parameter in PCS live as well as in here. But if you create, of course, always work in PCS live and then you can check what kind of IM parameters are necessary, necessary, which you need to fulfill before sending out the dossier. The same goes with operation points, for example. You could also go for Germany now, it doesn't matter. Search for operation points. I hope they're inserted in this test system as well. But usually you will find all operation points which you can request a pass from in each country or of each country. And by clicking on this sort of window, you will see all locations in here with the correct ID and the primary location code, just for your information. So uh, I guess what I would like to do now is I would like to hand over to Freddy, if you do not have right now a question, and may, maybe Freddy could show, give you some information, which is very interesting as well about news from PCS. And afterwards, we could maybe create another case if you would like to, however you would like to. So, Freddie, would you like to take over? Shall I show your presentation? Uh, yes, I am ready to take over control, let's say. Um, okay. I can, I have opened the presentation on my laptop, so maybe it's it's easier that, that I navigate through the presentation. Perfect. It's more uh, convenient. Now I go to the next challenge, which is sharing the screen and sharing the correct presentation. You will surely make it. No, I'm not sure. OK, just let me know if you see the screen. We see something, if it's the right one. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, it's technical commercial meeting. It was in this initially the day of 15 February, so. That's, That's the right one. <laughs> OK. So some brief words about uh, Infrabel IM parameters, also about some uh, features 
I would like to highlight a little bit in, in this audience because they are definitely interesting. Some of them have already been uh, touched and been explained by Felicia. So the first one I would like to pay attention to is that for uh, the freight dossiers, Infrabel has made it uh, mandatory to insert the PC codification for combined traffic, which in fact is nothing new. Uh, we did it already the, the, the previous years. The only thing that has changed is the input mask of each field. What I mean by this, I mean simply by this that in each field you have to insert three digits. So even if your future train has no combined traffic, that means you will have to insert four times three times zero. If you don't do it, you just will get the pop up that will tell you the length must be exactly three digits. Uh, just to remind, uh, if if you are combining this with your train parameters, you can copy them all over your locations of the dossier and you can even uh, store them in some kind of template that you can use the same set of uh, train parameters and uh, combined traffic codes in other dossiers that you might create later on. Next thing is also new in PCS at least for this year, the way it has been developed. It's the first year that the non-RU applicant can assign the what we call the responsible RU. That is the responsible RU, the railway undertaking that will be uh, operating the, the traffic in, in real time. For this, we have some new feature. We have in the first step in the applicant timetable, there is the new button added. Uh, which is marked here in the presentation in, in green with the RU button. It works on uh, subpath level, on territory level. So you have to make sure, at least you don't have to, but you have the possibility 30 days before the first day of operation to assign the responsible RU. What will be the consequence of it? Once the responsible RU has been assigned uh, by the applicant, that uh, company will receive an email notification. Then they can go to PCS. They can open the dossier. They have access rights, just reading rights. And then in PCS themselves, in the dossier, in the concerned uh, subpath, they have the possibility to accept or to reject. In this uh, slide, you see how it works. So the non RU applicant, he selects the subpart for whom he want to assign the responsible RU. There is a drop down list opening in the tool and then you can select the RU that, that you prefer to run the operational business from his or her site. There is also the possibility to transfer edit rights to that responsible RU in path modification. This is the process that is started after the train path has been allocated and if the RU or the applicant want to apply for modifications in the allocated path. So here you have the screenshot where you can see that for the certain sub path here, there has been an RU being assigned, being appointed. You will see here the name of the responsible RU that is appointed, at least the request. And then here you have the, the icon that marks with the E. It's an information telling you that the appointment request is still pending. After that, the responsible RU opened the dossier. He goes in the dossier. He goes looks in the applicant timetable in the subpath. And then he will see here some new buttons added in the tool where you have the possibility whether to accept or to reject it. If you accept, the action will be stored in the log file in the comments field. If you reject it, same, and then you will lose access rights for the dossier. And everything is stored and kept in the comments field of each dossier. And then you see here an example in, in the comments screen how it is stored. In this example, you see that 
Linea support did some action in the dossier and they accepted it to be assigned as responsible RU. This is a totally new feature this year in PCS, so we will testing it. Maybe in the future we will have some changes depending on what the real business case bring us. Also, once that the responsible RU has accepted his invitation, his appointment, then the status, <coughs> sorry, will change here. You will get here this mark to indicate, <coughs> sorry, he or she has accepted it. So this is a first uh, big change in the system. Again, it's not compuls compulsory to do it. It depends on, on the country too. Then I have some explanations about uh, some IM parameters that Infrabel uh, made uh, compulsory for the freight trains. First of all, this is the indication on uh, location level whether dangerous goods are uh, involved in the traffic, yes or no. Why do we ask it? Because in the planning we have uh, at least one tunnel that is uh, forbidden for freight trains with uh, dangerous goods. And then the second one that we foresee in PCS that we implement as, as IM parameter is the drop down list with the traffic type of freight train. Here the applicant can choose what kind of traffic it's concerned. Block train, combined traffic, single wagon and empty rolling stock. Why we ask this? Because between Belgium and the Netherlands, Infrabel is responsible for assigning the international train number. And uh, that is partly based on the traffic type of freight trains. And then something about copy train parameters. Applicant, are you have the possibility to copy the train parameters uh, from one location to all locations? You have the possibility to not only copy everything that is related to your traction details, mean your locomotive, uh, your length and weight of uh, carriage set, but also you can copy, for instance, the common train parameters, like I explained before for infrabelt, so dangerous goods and the traffic type. And you can even copy activity types and location types. So in fact, all in one, you can copy them to the stretches of your subparts that are selected in a next screen. But that topic Felicia already explained to you. Have to keep in mind if you select activity types and location types, then they will be copied to all your locations in your subpart which could mean that for some they are still not correct and you have to change them manually. For instance, if you switch from a run through to a commercial stop or other stops. Then something that can save your work too, in case you have uh, a lot of uh, PCS dossiers, a lot of capacity requests, when you always use the same set of train parameters. So in the, in the previous uh, presentations, you could see how you could copy them inside your dossier. But this function goes a level higher, level further. What do I mean with this? You can select all your sets of uh, train parameters. So the traction type, the uh, weight, length of carriage set, your container profile, dangerous good indications, your IM level parameters. <coughs> and you can copy them and save them as a template. You just click what parameters you want to keep stored in the template. <coughs> Sorry, there was a crack in my voice. So you select the parameters, you give them a name. I always advise uh, our customers to use a name of your uh, template uh, that reminds you very easy what is the composition of your template. So in this example, I called it demo RFC2 tracks 1600 ton, 600 meter and P100. 
just to remind if I call them up in a dossier to be inserted, what are the parameters composed of? And then I can see it directly when I load them. How do you insert them now in a dossier? Well, you go in your sub path and here you have the possibility you have the button copy. You can copy the sub path. That is not what we're going to do. We are going to select this one. Train parameters from template. And then the tool will show you <coughs> all available templates that the system knows for this timetable here and also for this territory. It is important to say that the templates only work on territory level. Meaning if you have a traffic from uh, Zeebrugge to Genua, for instance, you can make some nice uh, train parameter template. It can be applicable for Infrabel territory, but the same one you can't use for your DB nets, for your Swiss and for your Italian locations. So they work on territory level, but not all over the complete dossier. And then at the end, yeah, it saves you a lot of work because all your train parameters will be inserted to all the subparts that you, you have been selected. And like this, I'm quite convinced that you can work a lot faster in creating your dossier. And with this, I come at the end of my last slide of this presentation. I don't know if you have any questions, feel free. So the floor is yours. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Freddy. We just wait or anybody can just say something if you would like to raise a question. I think it's very important these templates now, which we have for the parameters for pubs where we already have like parameters inserts, certain parameters inserted in the dossier in the timetable. They're already included there. You would probably not always use a template, but you would use it for the tailor made pass or you would use it if you would surely not uh, request a pub. I guess. But uh, this template is a very, very good way, as you said, Freddy, to ease your life if parameters have not been inserted in a dossier already. And this is the case if you don't have a pub dossier. However, the audience is a bit quiet. Do you have any uh, kind of questions for now or do you have any kind of wishes? Because it's uh, we have half an hour left. And usually we could show you, I would really say thousands of cases of how to insert a pub. But I guess from my perspective, it's always important to know the traffic concept behind. And if you have the traffic concept behind, then it's more easily to decide how you create this dossier in a slight easy way. So my um, wish to you would be, if you are interested in pubs and if you are not that familiar in the system, which some of you may are, then always come back to us and we will support you even in creating the dossier. As there are really many ways and sometimes some obstacles as PCS is quite, say, uh, intelligent, but very complex as well. And there might pop up some alerts but it doesn't, um, I don't think it makes sense to show too many alerts here. It makes sense to really work on certain dossiers to create a proper request. So my plan to you would be, if you are interested, just come to one of our COSFs. And another, um, yeah, that would be it from my side for now. Are there no questions or my colleagues from the COSFs? Do you have any more information? would like to spread. Oh, Steffi, we can't hear you. Because yesterday, I tell you, we had a um, we had a session and it went right long because we had a newcomer who worked with us directly at PCS. And therefore, it took quite long until we got somewhere. Today, I think the you are more familiar with PCS, so there are not that many questions right now. But Steffi, Jean or Paul, 
Would you like to add something? I'm fine. Well, I, I know by experience that uh, when you're working in the RU, you have some commercial issue that you maybe do not always want to share with so many participants. So uh, usually after such a session, I receive one or two phone calls from some customers and we, we look into a concrete case more in mm -hmm. details. So that's that's the way it is, uh, and I think it has been a very good presentation. Uh, thank you, uh, Felicia, Stephanie, Paul, and Freddy. Also, um, very interesting. Okay, Steffi, would you like to add something? Um, yeah, just from the organization orga. Oh. Organizatorische part. I don't know the word in English. I cannot say it. Sorry. But um, nevertheless, um, afterwards, um, if you were affected uh, with the storm today or because of other reasons, maybe did not hear everything or just want to repeat again, um, you will receive uh, from RNE a thank you email latest on Monday and there um, the presentation is attached um, also from the other groups um, and as well the link to the um, yeah to the recording from today um, so you can um, again have a view on this and uh, nevertheless always ask questions to us directly. All right, but but we won't leave you out before we you, you don't have answered the last question, I guess, because we have the last question, which is very interesting for us. Maybe I don't know. Can we have it in the chat? That question is about how you feel if we end the session. Do you feel good, relaxed, as I do now? Weekend is uh, in front of us, well prepared or then, or not enough prepared. Looking forward to order and PCS, that would be even the most important <laughs> answer for us. And uh, yeah, if you would just send your answer, we would be very glad. You know, can I choose more than one answer? Okay. I have to look a bit closer. My eyes are getting bad. I can see some people are even looking forward to all on PCS. That sounds really good. And you feel good. 48% and relaxed. So, okay. Then thank you very much. I think we should not uh, stay another 20 minutes just to have these 20 minutes. For me, it was, it was a pleasure to have you around. We said everything we wanted. You can always contact us. Whenever you yeah, would was, like to any of us. It was a lot of information. Huh? Yeah. Oh, was it? OK. So there will still be some questions left. That's really good to hear if you have questions left and don't hesitate to contact us. Because okay, thank you. you. Thank you so much. OK. Then from my turn, thank you and have a good day. Bye. Thank you. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.